Sure, and he uses uh, Rizru could content regarding Regulus and Amelia. Why Greed wants Amelia? The dark truth behind being his wife. Well, in my opinion, I thought that Regulus just desires beauty and purity. He doesn't care about consent. He doesn't care about any of his wife's interests. It's just, you're hot. Therefore, I'm going to mount you on this designer bag clothing shelf. And every one of you are just these objects of desire that only I can control. I, I think there's something going on with there, especially with the whole virginity aspect, the whole innocence of not even knowing these things, the purity. There's a certain calm that comes whenever we switch over to the scenes with Amelia. Where the rest of the city is in utter chaos and turmoil, Amelia faces a completely different battle. Yep. She's completely oblivious to the events happening outside her castle, and that makes the events with her tranquil by comparison. It's this piece that actually makes way for some interesting dynamics, first with the relation she's forced to have with Regulus, then second with the one she's trying to have with Wife 184. It's not something the anime makes very apparent, but behind the scenes, Amelia truly is striving to break her out of her shell. In fact, by the time we reached this point at the end of episode 6, there were several times in which Amelia actually got 184 to slip. She this did. is what I want to focus on for this Couple times, and then there was a moment where she turned around and just immediately went like, Alright, I'm locked in. Probably because of seeing wives die over and over again. You can't talk back to the husband. This is just basically the super, super late end stage of domestic abuse where she's just been conditioned to never even like think anywhere else. And it's hard to like break that mentality until Amelia will show something. Video because not only do those slips provide valuable insight on Regulus, they also make her relationship with Amelia that much more important. It's one of the more major bits of cut content that I feel needs talking about. But first. Before we get started. But first, ah! I don't know if you guys knew this, but Jun Maeda, the creative genius behind Angel Beats. Oh yeah, there's a new anime coming out. There's a new anime coming out from this motherfucker. I watched Charlotte. I haven't watched Angel Beats yet. I'll never forgive what he did to Pooh, bro. No. Fuck this guy. No! ...and one of my top 10 anime clan ad also happens to make video games too. Oh, a story-driven RPG firstly released in Japan that's now finally getting an English version for those who can't- The fuck? Is it gotcha game? Heavens Burn Red. That's probably gonna be just cute. <clears throat> like, the cover tells me, cute slice of life, moe girls. But when you actually probably play it, it's like, trauma, backstory, PTSD. Launching globally November. Yeah, 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 it truly pained her to hear such a beautiful voice spoken without any emotion. Amelia naturally had quite a few questions for her, but of the ones 184 felt the most inclined to answer, it was the confirmation her name was in fact 184. Numbers. She even went so far as to warn Amelia not to get it wrong, because to do so would most certainly garner punishment. Damn. Regulus was apparently very picky when it came to maintaining the numbers. <laughs> now, when the water had flooded... Why though? Even 79, specifically say for Fortuna and now it's for Amelia. What do these numbers even mean to him? The fuck? Why? The city and Amelia watched from the distance. She could actually see people getting washed away in it. She watched numerous bodies get tossed as the waters ravaged everywhere they were. Her first instinct was to leave and help, but once again, 184 would warn her not to. If she did, then Greed would make sure to punish her first, then he would punish whatever or whoever motivated her to act against his wishes. It was a grave risk considering how as far as she knew, Regulus could very well be as powerful as Reinhardt. Yeah, maybe. So, Amelia- Well, not as powerful, but like, like a tier right below Satala Reinhardt, right? And right below Sekhmet, but between Sekhmet, Reinhardt, and Satala tier, I think Regulus is like right in the middle. Based on what other people have been saying from the source material, based on what Tape has been saying. Ilya still wanted to sneak out to help anyway. It was determination that led to quite the interesting conversation with 184. 
whereas we only ever get to see her be emotionless, Amelia's innocent virtues stirred something else. The way she accepted 184's words without the slightest hesitation showed a level of integrity that shocked even her. Of course, this could also be shock at Amelia's naivete, but the fact she simply trusted everything 184 said went to surprise her in a way that visibly changed her expression. She couldn't believe Amelia would just accept the words of someone who was Regulus' wife. Such shock had actually given hope to Amelia, since it made it seem like the two might be able to have a proper conversation. Because of how fucked up her entire life was before, and she couldn't comprehend how she would just listen like that. As soon as Amelia had made a comment on it though, all emotion vanished instantly. To proceed any further would have undoubtedly resulted in punishment. Exactly, right? The entire reason- when Avor keeps slipping, there's moments of like, oh, I kind of want to be saved, I do want to get out of here, but then he snaps back to reality and says, no, nothing can be done, Regulus is just too absolute. This to Amelia was very strange, but despite 184 agreeing it was as well, that's just how Regulus was. According to her, what Regulus liked was his wife's normal face, the exact expression they had when he first deemed them wife-worthy. Smile. To stray in either direction from that, happy or sad, well, that would be cause for punishment too. So, to get visibly happy or sad, talk at all, or even furrow her brow. So, 184 then. Regulus enjoyed the aspect of her being so... just blank? I thought that her whole kudere, kudere look, right? Just... just empty eyes. Just, just like the... 9,000 yard stare with like a blank face, neutral, you know, mouth position. I thought that was because all these girls have been just brutally just beat down and told to just, you know, you can't do anything about this. This is your life. And they accept it. And now they're just depressed and they act like that. But based on this, it sounded like this is exactly what he enjoyed out of 184. This is actually how he met her. And she needs to maintain that like neutral look. So like a really good moment in the future. And, and she did. 184 did have a moment when she smiled. Right before Regulus almost killed 184, as the rock pebble was reaching her, right? Amelia saved her, but we saw it play by play. She was like smiling, almost as if accepting her death and finally saying, finally, this is my freedom. That's interesting. So not every other girl, I wonder what kind of, you know, face or, you know, look they're going to have. But so Amelia must... Just keep smiling, no matter what. That was all something 184 warned Amelia to do very little of. There was no telling what would rub Regulus the wrong way, and it was that fear that drove all his wives into emotional submission. Obviously, Amelia wasn't ready to just accept all that, so she immediately went deep into thought trying to figure out how they could perhaps have a regular conversation in secret. Something about that caused 184 to react too, but right before she was about to say something probably important, Capella would interrupt with her additional demand speech. It was similar enough aside from the usual extra insults the anime tends not to include. Okay. Interestingly enough though, since this was Amelia's first time hearing Capella on the media, she was able to quickly deduce just how sinister her intentions were. From just listening to the way she spoke, she knew her terrifying voice had the power to ensnare those who listened to it. Like, Amelia didn't know why she felt so restrained while she was listening herself, but as soon as the broadcast was over, she realized she'd been holding her breath. It had made it- Capella glaze, bro. <laughs> Dude, the amount of glaze for Capella right now, everybody knew exactly how fucked they were when Capella started talking. It clear Capella was skilled at using her voice to manipulate others. Okay. It was a natural born talent she carefully honed to do just that. This unfortunately erased all the progress Amelia made on 184, since by the time Capella finished what she had to say, 184 was back to the same emotionless self she was when her and Amelia first met. So whatever 184 was going to say before, she definitely wasn't going to say it now. I think she's close to cracking, though. The more that we continue pushing like this, I, I think that she will side on our side. I hope that she doesn't backstab us. One of the things I think would be so annoying is if Amelia tries to get all these wives freed and they start to kind of hope and start to agree and believe. But then the moment Regulus shows up, they all like backstab Amelia or something. I would suck. This brings us to the events of episode 6, where it's finally revealed how Amelia got naked. As it turns out, because Regulus wasn't the type of person to touch a woman's skin that way, the person who- He'll touch her hair. 
But he, he dared not touch Emilio's bare skin. Because to him, even the act of stripping her... The, the purity? Like, he's still a virgin. He has all these wives. But he chooses to stay chaste. Why? Because he never loses. Not even his virginity. But there's got to be something beyond that meme. Of like... No, no woman is good enough for my seed. No, I don't think Regulus is gay. In denial? Then there should be some femboys. Or some other dudes, right? There, there should be some husbands, right? If Regulus truly was just... <laughs> could you imagine Regulus as like a harem of husbands? <laughs> Yo, now that I think about it... Felix should have been the one kidnapped. And Regulus should have had a harem of femboy husbands. Oh my god, the more I think about this, the more ridiculous and how funny it would be, bro. Holy shit. No, that's not happening. Uh, but going back to what were we talking about, right? Uh, the whole, I don't even touch Emilia that way. Because to him, it's just all about like sanitizing purity. It's just like, nope, uh -uh, I'm going to keep myself so pure and all the girls are so pure and 184, you do it. One dressed her was actually 184. Regulus would never go so far as to touch one of his wives himself because to him the only thing he wanted was to assert his ownership. Wow. You hear that, guys? He doesn't touch his wives. He doesn't beat them. <laughs> he doesn't dare lay a hand on these wives so there's no case of domestic abuse being built up. But it's, it's, it's the ownership, though. It's the uh, ownership. This power control, right? He's just, he won't touch him. He will probably kill him using his, you know, authority, but it's all about the ownership, how that power dynamic, his ability to just, you know, make these girls just submit to no matter what and have them just be like, <laughs> have employee numbers. That's interesting. It's actually the reason why he always asks that same initial question. When the two moved on to their discussion about Subaru next, while Amelia was concerned Subaru would be pushing himself a little too hard, not for a second did she ever think he was dead. Part of this was because he now had Beatrice, but the other part was because he always seemed to find a way out no matter what. That's right. If you think about the perfect timeline of ReZero, it's actually bullshit what Subaru is doing. It's unfair. Ten steps ahead. Right place, right time. How does he keep doing this? But well, we know. <laughs> we know that it's not perfect. That said, that confidence in his abilities didn't mean she wasn't still worried about him. Since part of his troubles were technically her fault too, she did feel bad for putting even more pressure on him. Now, seeing Amelia contemplate Subaru with such warm compassion made 184 leave her with yet another warning. Should she ever mention Subaru in front of Regulus, then Ooh. he would immediately start to doubt whether what she said about being a virgin was true or not. <laughs> Amelia still didn't understand what that word meant, but... So, like, it's just word of mouth? I thought Regulus would check the girls somehow. And I think it was hinted when we were doing the whole clothing switch scene. That, like, he had the girls check her body to check that she is indeed a virgin, right? So, like... Regulus, does he really just take it by word? He's like, yep, I'm a virgin. He's like, okay, sure. Or does he, like, do some creepy shit and make the other girls actually, you know, do some, like, I don't know, like some hymen break test? Given her ignorance was what made Regulus so happy, it didn't seem like 184 was gonna answer even if she did ask. No. Instead, Amelia knew she would have to look it up herself later. <laughs> As for her current predicament now, the safest thing to do was just follow whatever 184 told her to do. Figuring out a plan would come later. Fast forward now to Amelia's next scene, and both her and Regulus should have been in their wedding attire. It's a shame we haven't yet seen it in the anime, but the full extent of their makeovers was this. Regulus found wearing his same unadorned getup would be disrespectful to Amelia. Wow. If they were going to continue their ideal relationship. Wow, guys. So much respect. He changed drip. Look at him, so considerate. Ship, then mutual give and take was an absolute must. <laughs> such were the depths of Regulus's generosity. Wow, this so generous. He's such a humble, generous man. Look at that, bro. Just making all these wives' dreams come true. This was him showing his willingness to change himself, all for the sake of his new wife, Amelia. Okay. Naturally, all of this sounded more than reasonable, but... Like, is this confirmation that Regulus is slowly changing or has he always done this for the other girls too what, what is this 
The way it was spoken was oh so terrifying. Amelia's very soul was cowering deep within her. It was mere moments away from pleading for mercy. When Regulus went to question her serious expression next, the moments Amelia took to pause and think about an answer were moments she was actually spending thinking about how to escape. Running away was certainly an option, but when considering how crazy Regulus was, there was no doubt he'd open his floodgates in retaliation to that. Another option was to fight, but with Amelia's instincts telling her this was impossible, the only other option was to stick around and probe for information. It was the safest and probably most helpful thing that she could do right now. When Regulus went on to reveal his 53 other wives, the reason he gave for being able to love all of them equally was that there was nothing more depraved than a husband who played favorites. What? Okay, let's hear this out. Of all of them equally was that there was nothing more depraved than a husband who played favorites. No favorite wife. He would never stoop so low and dishonor his wives that way, since <laughs> at all times he would always share the appropriate love in the appropriate way at the appropriate time. Wow. This was how Regulus perceived his role in this. <laughs> He's such a generous god. He doesn't even name them, bro. They all have numbers. Strips them of everything. They're all equal. There's no favorites here. He, he is so generous with this love. And he dare not make any wife feel left out. This, this is the ultimate husband. Oh my god. Now. There wasn't anything different with the way Regulus decided to attack 184, but I had actually noticed this when reviewing smile. the footage. Smile. Just smile. There were a couple frames where 184 seemed happy. Bop! Smile! 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 Yeah, right there, right there. She's like accepting this. Oh my god, free me from this fucking suffering. Almost like she was at peace with the imminent death coming straight towards her. And then Amelia there saved it. There was some slight agitation that caused her to tense up after, but as soon as Regulus's fit was over, 184 continued just as we saw in the anime. To expand on her next point about happiness not being a requirement for marriage, it turns That's out so that sad. Regulus had forced such a twisted view of the concept on them that the only thing she and the others believed about it was that spending time with him was the only necessity. This was the only requirement they knew about marriage. Love and happiness. Just a bunch of ignorant mountain girls that he just poaches. All these girls that have no understanding of what, you know, healthy relationships should be. Their first encounter is probably Regulus, right? And, and then they're taught that this is the norm. And they can't do anything about it. And they don't even... I wonder if they think something is wrong. I don't know. Maybe some of them probably think so. But I bet, like, because of the type of girls that he picks, of how innocent and pure and ignorant they must be, and then he, like, forces this down on them. This is so twisted. They don't even know better. 184, them all saying that shit. They don't even know better. ...weren't necessary at all, since to Regulus, the only thing that mattered was being around each other all the time. It was a direct opposite view to what Amelia had. Seeing how powerless she was to convince 184 otherwise, though, Amelia didn't sink into a spout of depression, but instead spurred herself into action. She wouldn't allow herself to abandon 184 or any of the other wives. So, thinking about how Subaru wouldn't just rush in without any preparation, Amelia came up with the plan we saw in the anime. As the only one to get caught by the enemy, she knew she was the only one who could probe their position from the inside. She did well. That being the case, Amelia decided to take a move from Subaru's playbook and turn a hopeless situation into something positive. This brings us to Regulus's conversation next, which, to reiterate the core message he was trying to convey, what he's doing here is completely separate from what Capella's doing. Since he only came here to find his fated bride, that made him uninvolved with anything that Capella was scheming. Okay. That being the case, as soon as he and Amelia finished getting married, Regulus planned to leave regardless of whether Capella's plans were completed or not. Huh. So Amelia Damsel in Distress arc could actually continue if the medic wedding happens and no one crashes it. And like, Pristella then <laughs> would be just down to three archbishops, right? <laughs> and Greed would leave. I thought they were all united by the words of the gospel, considering how the demands also, you know, increased and they specifically mentioned no one should, you know, shall disturb the wedding. Why is this wedding so necessary? Because like, this isn't, I don't think this is regular saying like, I'm going to have a wedding, guys, and you guys almost listen. 
I think this is from like a higher order up, right? I'm assuming that everybody is listening to the words of the gospel through Pandora right now. And if we assume that part, then Pandora also deems that this wedding is necessary for it to happen. Or maybe she's like, you know what? Regulus is such a fucking wild card that if he doesn't have this, he'll you know, crash out. So let him, let him just have it so that we can do our thing. I'm not sure. Where is Pandora right now? Is it Otto? Who is it? ...to leave regardless of whether Capella's plans were completed or not. It's up to her to achieve her goals within that time frame. Now, the key word I want to focus on here is faded, because Amelia wasn't just some random person Regulus became infatuated with off the street. No, everything Fortuna. he did was completely premeditated. Fortuna. It took myself longer to realize than I want to admit, but 79. the whole reason Amelia is 79 instead of wife 292 is mainly because of what happened all those years ago. Was he pre-ordering here? <laughs> Did, are, are, are they uh, <laughs> pre-ordering here? <laughs> well, well, no, okay. well, this is for Fortuna at this moment. But like, I wonder what Regulus thought when she when he saw Amelia at this time, right? Like, what, what is he thinking? Because he wanted Fortuna to be seven nine. Probably didn't think much about Amelia. I don't see any lollies, you know, part of his wives. So maybe he's not a lollycon, guys. He just wants grown women. I don't know exactly how or when he decided he wanted Amelia to be his, but the fact she's 79 means the decision was made a while ago. Likely back in the forest since that was the only encounter they ever shared together. Yeah. That being the case, I guess it just so happened now was the time he decided to come and claim her. So Regulus might not be directly involved with the plan. And the funniest shit is, if again, Sirius is Fortuna. If we assume that Sirius is Fortuna, and if we assume that, you know, 79 was set for directly Fortuna, it's funny how he calls her ugly and everything. Because obviously, you know, her face is all band-aged up and it goes against everything that Regulus finds attractive. But like, this could be the original 79th wife. <laughs> but nah, we got a million now. Regulus might not be directly involved with the plans of Capella, but his presence certainly makes for quite the massive obstacle. As for what it means to be his wife, those are all the details 184 should have been drip-feeding us. She makes it clear there's nothing sensual about their relationship, but instead just a pure sense of ownership. But anyway, such was the extent of Amelia's scene so far. I'm sure we'll learn more as the story continues, but for now I figured her relationship with 184 needed to be highlighted. It'll make what I expect is her inevitable double cross all the more satisfying. Double cross. Now, if you haven't seen last hmm. episode, then you can do so. We have already. And I'm, we're going to be waiting for the next, you know, cut content for, you know, the most recent episode with a speech. But at the end of the day, it has to do with ownership. Ownership over the things he deems pretty and he thinks that it's mine. All these girls, he never even touches, really. He's still a virgin. Every one of these girls are virgins. It's all about purity. It's all about keeping himself just clean and good. And he just has this power dynamic that just controls all these girls. Ownership. Not even that, it's just no favorites either. He's such a benevolent husband. He treats every one of them equally shit. <laughs> okay, sure. But, uh, you know, he pulled out the fucking, you know, drip for the wedding. I wonder if this light novel art will also kind of show their actual drip in the anime as well. But this wedding, man, who's going to crash it? I expect Subaru to crash it. I hope that Puck somehow comes out and helps. Now, Puck is dormant because the vessel, the crystal, it's not good enough. And the whole reason we showed up was to kind of reach out to Kiritaka, who might have like a greater monostone or something, right? But um, Puck, Subaru, I feel like someone should crash the wedding. What if it's Al? You know, we're, we're still going with Al, Subaru stuff. Al crashing it? I don't know. We'll see. But that's it for me. Please go give Mr. Any News like on the video. Here's the link of the video. Boom. Go give it a like. I'll see you guys next time.